The year was winter all over again, and all the engines were working hardest to get the job done before Christmas arrives. This year was supposed to be a special celebration for Christmas time. On this occasion, there is to be a Santa special. Every year, a man dresses up like Santa Claus. Then, an engine is arranged to take Santa on a special journey towards his final destination. There are crowds of children swarm around, excited to meet him. Only Daisy, who was delivering workmen to the clay pits, could complain bitterly. It's always the same, she flounced. Santa comes, passengers come too. The rails are blocked by ice, traffic is delayed, etc. What on earth is Christmas really getting into? I My swear. swerves cannot take this sudden change. Bill and Ben were used to these holly jolly traditions on this year and were willing to stand up to or any exit. Where's your festive spirit, Ben? Your swerves seem to be the only thing stopping you from enjoying this Christmas time, agreed Bill. <laughs> Sniffed Daisy. Still doesn't change the fact that these Santa specials are such a pain. We bet, chanted the twins, that you should take the Santa special to lighten your spirit. Daisy was flabbergasted. I certainly would not, she cried. Heavy packages in my baggage holders and noisy children upon my driver's ears. It's degrading. That's enough out of you three, snapped Boko, losing patience. We're here to work. That's we all. can deal with this Santa special another day. The twins obliged as Daisy scuttled away to the branch line. The twins, they could still hear the mumbles of Daisy thinking Santa specials were beneath her. That night at the sheds, the twins couldn't stop t talking about Daisy. Who does she think she is? demanded Ben, giving her own nasty opinions upon Christmas spirit, agreed Bill. Boko tried to calm them down. Now, Listen, now, Daisy's entitled to her opinion. She is a diesel rail car, after all. Only made for pulling passengers. And carrying goods, you might say. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, Boko added, as his driver went home to bed. Soon he was asleep as well, except for the twins. Still isn't right to barge in and ruin our festive spirit, moaned Bill. Ben hatched a devious scheme. It's passengers she carries, eh? Then something was Bill. We'll do it tomorrow, he said. Later the next morning, Daisy was waking up, ready for another day's work, when her driver came up with important news. Wake up, old girl, he said. I've just received words that Sir Topham Hatt wants us to go to the works for something special tonight. Daisy was confused but obliged. As she arrived at the works, she noticed there were several workmen approaching her. Most of them had paint cans in their hands, as if they were about to paint something. Um, what is this about? Daisy asked innocently. Why didn't you hear? said Edward. You're being decorated in order, in order to take the Santa special. Daisy was surprised. Santa special? What, me? Some locals had told Sir Tom Hatt you wanted to feel more special. So you had thought taking the Santa special would be an ex exceptional. What? I've never said anything like that, spluttered Daisy. No time to argue about that, interrupted her driver sternly. Orders are orders. But think about my swerves and my outpost. Three cried Daisy, but no one listened to her and continued on with their work. The sound of thumping and drilling echoed through the works as they set to work on Daisy. By the time they had finished, Daisy was most embarrassed. Boko was humming happily at the station when he saw something that made him almost guffaw. Pulling into the station was Daisy, but very differently. She was covered in dark red, 
light blue paint around her fuel tank, along with the words Santa Special along her door frames. The passengers who were supposed to board on Daisy nearly burst out laughing. Daisy couldn't bear it. Oh, this is so humiliating, she shuddered. Cheer up, Boko said kindly. At least you look festive. It's all part of the job, added her driver. You'll soon find that carrying St. Nick isn't so bad after all. Daisy couldn't bear it as she rolled away. As she arrived at the next station, there was a smartly dressed man with a long white beard. This was supposed to be Santa Claus. To the children, at least. Daisy winced as he saw the man approach her. You know, my train usually comes with an engine and a few spare coaches, he said. But you know, having a diesel rail car is quite a neat change. Daisy could only blush. I agree, agreed the little boy. This rail coach would be quite, quite the comfortable ride for you, Santa. She looks splendid. Yes, chuckled the old man. Please, Daisy, do your best, he advised. We have a lot of presents to sort out. And as soon as everyone was on board, Daisy set off. Soon she had reached Edward Station, where Santa proudly presented the children all their presents. May I present, he greeted, the first gift of Christmas. Everyone waved and cheered as Santa passed out all the gifts to the good little boys and girls. And even Daisy had to admit that Christmas was really special after all. Unknown to her, however, she didn't really hear the snickers of both Bill and Ben, who had whispered to their drivers. That sure was a clever plan to pay her out, chuckled Ben. Quite, agreed the driver. Although next time, don't send us back there for another host. My veins are worn out eventually. The twins could only laugh as the sound of Daisy singing along echoed through the air.